Like a lot of Queenslanders, my, uh, my experience of big things tends to be a passing experience. We pass them on the roads. They're always by the roads, usually next to service stations or uh, bait and tackle shops or big hardware stores. So there was a, a hardware store in Ipswich where I grew up and uh, as a kid whenever we made what for me then was the long drive to Brisbane, the return to Ipswich was always marked by the moment you drove past the big hammer on the edge of town. That was it, you were home to Hammersville. And later on as I, um, as I grew up and, and moved out of home and, and did that very uh, Queensland thing, a lot of road tripping. It's a huge part of life for teenagers and, and young 20s layabouts like me is just hopping in the car and, and driving. You would almost always end up driving into a, uh, a servo or a, a roadside joint that had some big thing attached. There were other like mystery big things you saw once and never saw again, despite repeated attempts to track them down, one of which is still bugging me 20, maybe 30 years after we drove past. It was a big pavlova, which I, 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 I suspect was actually a water tank um, with some kind of corrugated iron roof, and it had been painted pink. Not that I've seen a lot of pink pav, but it had strawberries on it, on like big painted strawberries on the outside. And, the roof had sort of collapsed inwards very much like the way the actual pavlova roofs collapse inwards. I thought it was a really, really admirable attention to detail on the, the part of the, whoever it was who put the big pavlova together. But you can't grow up in Queensland without knowing about the big pineapple. I took my own kids to the big pineapple, oh, I don't know, two or three years ago. It was. Um, Surprisingly disappointing. It, uh, I, was, I was, you know, hoping there would be a lot of pineapple-related uh, science research inside the pineapple. I sort of imagined you'd go around this like double helix staircase, and but no, the old the big pineapple just had a really, really pedestrian food court as I remember, and a lot of disappointed Japanese tourists shuffling through. The really interesting thing about the big thing phenomenon, it's not a Queensland phenomenon solely, but I, I think if you, if you did the stats and you crunched the big thing numbers, you would find that the, the greatest density of big things per square mile was to be found in this state, and some of the more some of the more interesting big things up in, like there's a big Captain Cook up in uh, Cairns, which I was lucky enough to see a couple of years ago. And he's just by the side of the road doing a, um, doing a sort of Nazi salute, actually. I don't, I don't know why he was doing that. Oh, yes, I do. Someone in Cairns explained it to me. It's not the Nazi salute at all. I said, that's actually, there's a lot of dope growing up around Cairns. And, uh, they said, that's Captain Cook measuring his plants, going, they were this high, mate. Why? Why do we do this? I, um, I suspect th there's probably a bit, of, uh, a bit of frontier psychology going on. There's a, there's a, uh, there is still, and for a long time, has been within the, the Queensland imagination, um, something of a, a reflexive, um, defensiveness that you know perhaps we're not good enough you know perhaps we're we're a bit lame uh, very you know very much an unsophisticated uh, frontier society and you know we didn't have the, the great art galleries and the lovely uh, libraries in the old day in the old Queensland State Library a lot of people used to um, mistake it for a toilet block when it was in that toilet block looking building in the, the city and I, I think there was a sort of, I, I, I like to think of the big things as a popular reaction to this, that, you know, if the, the elite of the state couldn't, uh, couldn't bring us the, the, the cultural baubles we, we deserve, then we'd just make them for ourselves, but we'd make the baubles that we'd want, like, you know, the giant Captain Cook measuring his mull plant or 
the big banana or the giant Van Gogh. Can't go past the giant Van Gogh for a massive cultural statement. I, uh, I worry about the future of the big things. I, I, I don't know that we're actually keeping up in the big thing race that uh, is never ending never ends as a race. There's always someone building something big somewhere and I, I, I sort of worry that as we move away from our frontier roots and become more enmeshed in a sort of, you know, postmodern, digital, a world of unreal things rather than, you know, real big things that we'll, we'll let, let go of our big thing heritage and, and those those big things that people cared about once upon a time will, will not be important to us in the future. They will just fade away like a really big memory. <laughs>